Aloha guys, Dr. Thomas coming back again, that's right, uh, you haven't worn me out yet. All right, we're going to look at Chapter 9, Laws and Ethics of pa Patient Confidentiality. Of course, this is Medical Law and Ethics class. We've talked about confidentiality several times already, because it's super, super important, as it should be. Objectives, distinguish between privacy, confidentiality, and privileged communication. Recognize the role that every member of healthcare Community plays in maintaining confidentiality. Identify the challenge that media presents to maintaining it. Discuss the importance of confidentiality of the medical record. Develop a personal philosophy for dealing with confidentiality dilemmas within an ethical framework. Disclosure of patient information. Uh, privacy and confidentiality in medical setting address both legal and ethical issues. Publics need to, uh, to know may conflict with the patient's desire to keep information private. Yeah, I don't know why they use the word public, though. I mean, uh, no one outside the medical field except for the insurance carrier would need to know some of this. Okay, HIPAA, we've talked about that. What do I always say when you hear HIPAA? What should you think of? Privacy. Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, enforced by the federal government in 2003. Providers, uh, provide standard operating procedures for all health-related information, Security, health care providers of hospitals, nursing homes, physicians, managed care organizations, payers, health care plans, and clearinghouses. All electronic media written documents and spoken word. So very serious about privacy, guys, as, as they should be. A person's medical and health information, we have a right for it to be confidential. Purpose of HIPAA, protect and enhance consumer rights. Improve the quality of health care in the United States. Improve the efficiency and effectiveness of health care delivery. History, 1134 B.C. Oh, okay, I didn't know this. Greek physicians recorded case histories on columns in the temples, including, how's that for privacy? The Middle Ages, uh, medical information was public. The 19th century, medical information was secret. The 20th century, probably so secret that if you another doctor you needed, you couldn't get it. The 20th century, physicians promised to honor patient confidentiality, originating with the hip Hippocrates. Legally known as privileged communication. Obviously, guys, our healthcare centers and, and physicians and so forth need to be able to, you know, to share that information stuff. It's important. This privileged communication. A label placed on information passing between people that cannot be substituted into evidence in a court of law. Unless the patient voluntarily waives or gives up his or her privilege against disclosure. Hmm. This is something different than what I thought it was. It's, it's, it cannot be submitted into evidence for a court of law. Very interesting. Like between an attorney and a client, which they have right here, cannot be, you know, you, that's a privilege that cannot be, can't make the lawyer tell that in court. Uh, unless a patient voluntarily waives or gives up his or her privilege against disclosure. Example, communication between a husband and wife, communication between an attorney and a client. That I knew about. Between a physician and a patient, communication between a priest and a pen penitent. I don't know what a penitent is, but it sounds good. Uh, this is getting into a legal area, guys, that I don't know much about. Um, apparently, information between a husband and wife is, is private and can remain that way. You can't make a person tell. So, I knew it was that way with an attorney. I didn't know it was that way with a physician either. I would think that could be submitted, but I'm, I'm not saying they're wrong. They, they, the authors of the textbook know this much, much better than I do. Confidentiality is changing. Okay, Hospital records are increasingly available to outside reviewers. Employers and insurers insist they need to see this guarded information. Well, certainly the insurers do to a point, guys, because they have to pay the claims. I'm not some hip on whether the employers need it. Americans have taken a great interest upholding HIPAA confidentiality. Yeah, we had, and it costs a lot of money, too, guys, to do it from the, the out, standpoint of a, a health care provider. Confidentiality and technology. High tech requires protection of electronic health records, EHR. Remember, we had this before. Be sure to remember that. Electronic health record is a, is a vast one that different providers can access. Electronic medical record, an EMR, is the one for a given facility. Use of internet for storage features commonplace. Yeah, I'm sure. HIPAA uh, applies to EHR. Oh, yeah. EHR uh, creates increasing number of ways to 
compromise patient confidentiality. Yeah. The more it's out there, guys, the more, you know, it's apt to be tapped into for some reason. Medical office, high profile clients and confidentiality. Media is always interested in gathering medical information about public figures. Standard for public office holders, celebrities, professional athletes, etc. A breach of patient confidentiality can also happen if it's disclosed that, that a high pr profile person is a patient. Like a, a plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills, for example, might have a number of entertainment people and all their clients and they don't want that out and they have a right not not to have it out guys but sometimes it gets out medical office office personnel and confidentiality examples of violated HIPAA opportunities include sending a checkup reminder yelling across the room to another clerk about scheduling a vasectomy surgery now the one about the checkup reminder they they do that so I'm not sure where they're getting at here now, about the vasectomy, yeah, you know, uh, hey, yeah, uh, we need to schedule a vasectomy for Joe here. Uh, breaching confidentiality is not only unethical, but it may also cause legal problems. Yeah, in other words, you can get your butt sued. A lot of this is uh, common sense, too, guys. Medical records and confidentiality. Patient owns privilege. Physician may not release confidential patient information without patient authorization. However, when a new patient comes in, guys, in that stack that they sign, one of the things they sign is, is uh, permission to release it to, to certain individuals that have a right to see it. Okay? HIPAA addresses need for and, uh, and privacy issues that accompany electronic storage and medical record. The problem is electronic data can be hacked. Yes, it can. It can be lost. It can change. It can be affected by electromagnetic changes and you know, stuff like that. Limits of confidentiality. Keeping medical information confidential can breed conflict. Recording information about herpes uh, in a patient's medical record in a small town where everyone knew one another. Or uh, guys, before AIDS came about, everyone was scared of herpes. It's a, a viral thing uh, similar to <coughs> chicken pox and shingles and all this herpes zoster. It's herpes simplex. And... It it really didn't it, it didn't harm an individual, but it what they caught it through sexual transmission usually <clears throat> frequently. When they did, you couldn't get rid of it. I mean, you had it. And so people were scared to death of it. So, you know, you'd have to be very careful in a small town that you didn't let out that somebody had herpes. Because it would spread like wildfire. Or AIDS, for example, now, HIV. Or a teenager's raped and demands that no one in the emergency room call the police. I'm not sure about the legality there, guys, but they may have to. But see, again, you, in a small town there, you know, I lived in small towns in Tennessee and <coughs> Georgia for years. And yeah, man, that would be a, everybody in town would be talking about it. Hey, did you hear about old Billy Bob? A patient who's obsessed with someone reveals to a psychiatrist fantasy of harming that person. Let's say they like, they're obsessed with Tom Cruise and they say, so I, I'm fantasizing about, I, I want to shoot Tom Cruise. You know, you know, so, are, do you need to let someone know so they can watch this dude? I don't know. That's why it's an ethical confidentiality is an ethical dilemma, like it says right here. When it's okay to disclose, when is it okay to disclose patient information without authorization? State and federal law play an important role in deciding whether to reveal private information. Issue uh, resolved if you can believe it is ethical to follow rules at all costs. Issues complicated if you're motivated by other values or ethical thought systems. The main thing that comes to mind, guys, would be what if the patient needed some additional <coughs> medical treatment and this had to be revealed for that. I think that would be covered. So, uh, and of course, they say, well, you know, if, if you believe in following rules at all costs, and, uh, then you got no problem. But I don't necessarily agree with that part either. It depends. Developing an ethical decision-making process includes distinguishing between what's clinical, what's legal, what is ethical. Who owns the problem? I don't know, but that's all it says, so we're going to leave it right there. <laughs> all right, guys, this is all important stuff, a lot of which really has come about in the last 20 or 30 years since I've been in healthcare. Before, it was no, you know, it was no big deal. As a matter of fact, I'll say this, and we'll um, we'll wrap it up here. I can remember when I was a little kid that uh, people who had terminal cancer and stuff, frequently they wouldn't tell them. 
the family would know it, but they wouldn't tell the patient that they had terminal cancer and was going to die. They'd say, well, you just have that. Uh, like I, I actually remember meeting an old, older gentleman who was a smoker and had throat cancer, or esophageal cancer or something. And uh, uh, it was terminal and he, he had a real hoarse voice and everything. And and he, he told us that uh, the doctors had told him he just had uh, laryngitis and it would get better. And his grown daughter behind us was going. And I, uh, I've got a friend that's Chinese, and in China they still do some of that where they don't tell the patient. Now, guys, that's extraordinary, but I remember it, and it's still going on in other places. Uh, I, you know, I, a patient has a right to know what's going on. I, I, I just don't agree with that. I'm sorry. I mean, I know it's bad news to tell somebody, well, you know, you're, you have cancer and it's not treatable. There's nothing else we can do for you. But to keep it from them too is not right, in my opinion. It's, uh, who knows? All right. We got one more for uh, week four. Dr. Tom will be recording that shortly. So be there, be square. We'll see you next time. I'm signing off. Yes, I was in the Army. That's why I always salute. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Dr. Tom, you ain't in the Army no more.